Philippians, we're beginning Philippians now. Whole new topic. <clears throat> and as Pastor Jude suggested, there's a theme running here about partnership. Very strong theme about partnership. And also a very strong theme about rejoicing. Uh, some of you may have recall uh, a certain person at Muskoka reciting all of Philippians, rejoice, rejoice. I think it has a fabulous interpretation of Philippians. <clears throat> uh, we're going to approach Philippians a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna focus on this rejoice theme again, not so much on the partnership theme, as Pastor Jude is focusing on, but we'll be focusing on rejoicing. And in this particular chapter, we're gonna focus on Paul rejoicing in chains. <clears throat> Boy, does that sound weird, huh? Rejoicing in chains. He's, Paul's in chains. Paul's in Rome. I suspect this is Paul's final letter that he's reading from Rome. I think there's probably a trilogy here that he wrote from Rome, with Philippians being the last of the trilogy. Ephesians, Colossians, and then Philippians. I think this is his final letter. His last dictation. An anxious, somewhat anxious dictation. Before he is called home. Home to be with the Lord. Yet Paul seems very much at peace in this letter. With his impending death. I think he knows that the end is very near for him. Remember, he knows that he would not be visiting Ephesus again. We read about that in Acts 20. There was many prophecies telling him, you ain't going back to Ephesus. However, he seems to have some sort of optimism that he would be visiting Philippi for some reason. Somehow there's an optimism there. But if you compare uh, chapter 2, 24 against 1, 27, it's, uh, it's hard to say whether he expects to see Philippi again or not. And if he really did, this letter to Philippi would be pretty much unnecessary because he could tell it to them in person. Now, there's some suggestion that Paul made this final dictation to Timothy. I doubt it. I think this dictation was probably made to Tychicus again, just like Ephesians was made. And it seems that these later scribblings by Tychicus, who was the scribe, were given to the excellent Epaphroditus. Everybody say Epaphroditus. Because there's a... There's another one we're going to find out in Colossians who's Epaphras. Oh, similar names. Epaphroditus this time. Epaphroditus uh, lived in Philippi. So it seems that Paul is dictating this to Tychicus to give to Epaphroditus to take home in Philippi. So, he would give it to him as soon as Epaphroditus had recovered somewhat because there was some sort of illness that Epaphroditus was suffering from. So Epaphroditus was to take this letter to Philippi. And I suspect Tychicus might have traveled partway to Philippi with him. It seems Tychicus had gone to Ephesus before, and it seems that Tychicus is going to Ephesus again. Now, Ephesus, Ephesus was quite a trip. Ephesus was about a one month journey away by boat from Rome. So they're in Rome, they gotta head out to Ephesus, which is gonna take about a month to get there, and then it's gonna take Epaphroditus another week to get up to Philippi. 
That's a trip. That's an expensive trip. A long trip. Now, you might remember Philippi from our studies last year in Acts. Philippi, which is the home of the now demonless slave girl, the home of the jailer and his family, and probably the home for a couple years at any rate of good old Dr. Luke and Lydia. It seems they paired up somewhat. Now, um, Epaphroditus would probably then go to Ephesus first with Tychicus. Tychicus would deliver that letter of Ephesians in the church. He would, speak, he would uh, read out that letter of Ephesians in the church as soon as he got there. And Epaphroditus was probably listening to that, him reading that letter out. And after that was, letter was read out, there would probably be scribes there who would duplicate that letter to them. They would uh, pen a copy of that unifying letter for Epi. It was probably not Epi penned. Uh, I work so hard at this. It was a copy for Epi to take home, to take back to his Romy home. Why do we say Romy home? Because Philippi was very, very Romish, despite being very, very far away. It was so Romish that they did not have to pay taxes to Rome, unlike a lot of other cities, nations, on and on. So Philippi was very Romy. Anyways, content here. Paul continues in this first chapter of Philippians just as he ended the last chapter of Ephesians and as he ended the last chapter of Colossians as well. He speaks of his chains. He speaks of his chains over and over and over in this letter. Literal chains. Actual chains. Chains that would clink and clank when he walked. Chains that would make it very easy for his guards to keep track of him while he was under house arrest. It would make it very easy for them to track him down if he tried to escape. Chains that were an enormous nuisance to Paul. Perhaps even as much of a nuisance or more of a nuisance than this thorn in his side that you remember. However, these chains somehow were also an enormous blessing to the guards. In fact, they were a blessing to the whole palace guard. How? In verse 13, it says the whole palace guard. Why? Because those guards were a captive audience. They had to keep track of them. They had to listen to them. They were forced to listen. And they couldn't help but hear his gospel while they were listening. And then they shared that gospel with, well, they were palace guards. They shared it with the palace. So those palace guards, they shared that unchained gospel to end up sharing it with Caesar's household. Who was Caesar at that time? Anybody know who Caesar was at that time? It was Nero. So, they shared this gospel with Caesar's household. And this was a sharing that resulted in an atheism within Caesar's household. Atheism? What do you mean? Atheism means they don't believe in God. No, at that time, atheism means somebody who didn't believe in Caesar as being God. Mm -hmm. 
So, this infuriated Nero. Nero was not too happy about this new gospel, this new atheism. None too happy. And he ended up executing members of his household as a result. And eventually executing Paul as a result. And Paul could almost wish to be wasted, for he was more than ready for the glorification of his bruised and battered body. He was more than ready to be with Christ, even though his body would have to wait a little longer to be glorified. Your body doesn't get glorified as soon as you go to heaven, as soon as you takes a little lot, <laughs> have to wait a little bit longer till Christ returns. And he was anxious to meet with Christ. Not that he was suicidal or anything. He would just prefer greatly to be with Jesus. Like he said, it was better by far. And nothing wrong with feeling that way. But Paul knew that was just selfish thinking on his part. He suspected that his death would not be the best for others at this particular time. He suspected that fruitful labor was likely better for others at this particular time. So don't get any dumb ideas about suicide. It's not in your best interest. Just as it was not in Paul's best interest. Uh, Paul developed that thinking a little bit in 2 Corinthians as well. He alludes to this as well. In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, 6 to 10, Paul says that we should be of good courage, that we should have as our ambition to be pleasing to him in this body, knowing that we will receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. So you should be intent on continuing to do good in your body at this moment. However, it seems that Paul's death was indeed best around that time. That it was not more necessary for Paul to remain in the body around that time. That the fullness of things done by Paul had come at that time. That what had begun in Paul what's verse 6? Was about to be completed by the Lord. It appears that way to me. And it appears to me that the Lord inclined Nero's heart to execute Paul. The Lord plants those thoughts in king's heads. <clears throat> However, Paul was still given one last thing to do. What was that? No. Write that letter. He was given the opportunity to prepare Romy Philippi for the same struggle that he was currently having in Rome. He was preparing them to wear those chains just like he was currently wearing. He was to be a model. Paul was a model in how to wear those chains and how eventually to escape those chains. All right. Father, thank you for this model. We, we wear many chains, literal chains, the spiritual chains in this journey that you've given us. Thank you for this model and how to wear those chains and we look forward to escaping them to be with you when you have <clears throat> finished your job with us. Amen. Can I just tell one